What's up everybody, this is Danny, and I'm excited for this video because I have probably the two most premium laptops right here with me, and I have the new Surface Book with Performance Space, and I have the brand new redesigned 2016 MacBook Pro. So if you were thinking about buying one of these and you weren't sure which one to buy and which one would work best for you, then hopefully this video will help you out. All right, so both of these come in a bunch of different configurations, but to save time, these are both maxed out so you can see the highest potential of both of these machines. This Surface Book has the newly updated dual core Skylake Core i7 clocked at 2.8 gigahertz with 16 gigabytes of RAM and the Nvidia 965M graphics with two gigabytes of video RAM. And this 15 inch MacBook Pro has the quad core Skylake i7 clocked in at 2.9 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of RAM and the Radeon Pro 460 with four gigabytes of video RAM. Both of these are premium when it comes to the unboxing experience and the basic stuff like the chargers are included, but the Surface Book does come with the pen, which is nice. So if you're a graphic artist, then this would probably be the choice for you. This is the 13 inch MacBook Pro, which is closer to the size of the Surface Book, but there's no dedicated graphics option for the 13 inch MacBook Pro, which is crap by the way. So I had to use the 15 inch to make the comparison make sense. First of all, build quality on both of these machines are top notch, and I think it's gonna come down to personal preference. The new MacBook Pro is for sure one of the best built laptops I've ever used, and the machining is impeccable, and it's all packed into this thin metal design. It's beautiful all around. The Surface Book is also extremely well built with this futuristic dynamic fulcrum hinge. It's all magnesium alloy body. I mean, it feels solid when you're using it. It also has this cool trick up a sleeve so you can detach a display to use it as a tablet so you get the best of both worlds. There's nice subtle curves by the keyboard with hidden ventilation. And I mean, this design is very well thought out. In terms of how these companies want you to interact with the computer, couldn't be any more different. The new MacBook Pro has this new OLED touch bar, which replaces the function key row on the top of the keyboard to dynamically change the keys to the app that you're using at the time. And you also get a touch ID sensor that doubles as the power button so you can sign into your computer quickly and you can also make secure online purchases. With the Surface Book, you get a full 10 point multi-touch screen so you can interact with everything on the display and the touch sensitivity is great and the pen also works decently for sketching and interaction. The Surface Book uses Windows Hello with facial recognition for fast sign-in. I love this, by the way, it is so fast. So I've been using these laptops for about three weeks now. So if I had to make a call, I think I prefer the Surface Book when it comes to the interaction. I personally think it's just easier to just touch the display wherever you want it. Like when I'm editing this video, it's just easier for me to touch the display and scrub through the timeline than to take my eyes off the display and mess with the touch bar. While the touch bar does have potential and has some useful features like scrubbing through a video while you're watching it and seeing little snippets of your tabs when web browsing for quick changes. But at this time, the touch bar is not fully customizable. So maybe in the future, this will become more useful. But I think for now, it's just more cool to look at. You can just learn some keyboard shortcuts or just touch the screen on the Surface Book. The keyboards on both are absolutely excellent and the MacBook keys are a little bit more shallow and don't have as much travel and tactility, but once you get used to it, it is incredible. It feels slightly mechanical and once I got used to the depth and feedback, now I absolutely love it. The keyboard on the Surface Book is more traditional with great feedback and travel. I think most people would prefer this keyboard when it comes to feel. Both are backlit and best in the business, so no worries there. If you didn't notice somehow, the trackpads on the new MacBook Pros are absolutely huge. I mean, almost huge for no reason, but it is excellent in terms of responsiveness and scrolling. MacBooks have always been great for this and the trackpad no longer physically clicks. It uses vibration feedback to give you that click feel. The trackpad is much smaller on the Surface Book, but it's also top notch, very smooth and responsive, and is one of the best trackpads on a Windows machine I have ever used. It's nice with great feedback. In terms of portability, you can see that the MacBook is much thinner and the hinge, while it's functional, makes the Surface Book pretty thick when it's docked and closed. So if you just look at the display portion, it is super thin. It is incredible that the CPU and all of the components are housed in here. It's engineering at its best. But when you're using it like a tablet, the battery life isn't the greatest. So you're gonna want this nearby and you can actually flip it onto the performance base to the other side and use it as a prop to enjoy watching videos while you're in the kitchen. Or you can actually continue using this as a tablet with the base attached. So when it comes to versatility, the Surface Book has it hands down. 
Battery life as a whole is better on the Surface Book since there's extra battery in the base itself. I'm getting about two to three hours more use with the Surface Book. So if you want really good battery life, Surface Book might be the way to go. When it comes to the ports, the Surface Book has two USB 3.0 ports and a full size SD card slot. And you also get the magnetic charging connector on the other side with a mini display port so you can hook up external monitors and you also get a headphone jack. The new MacBook Pros have a total of four USB Type-C ports and a headphone jack, and that's it. I know a lot of you are gonna be really angry about this decision, but for me, I actually don't mind it. The only thing I am pissed off about is the SD card slot. I think a lot of people use it. I still use it a lot, so I wish they would have included that. So the reason I'm not as angry, I mean, think about this. All of these four ports are Thunderbolt 3 capable, which means it's wicked fast, and you can drive large high resolution displays with any of these ports, and you can also charge the MacBook with just one cable, and you can get much faster USB 3.1 speeds, and you can also charge with any of these ports and with an external battery pack, which is really important for a person that travels a lot like I do, but I have to say I do miss the MagSafe connection. It is true, you may have to use some dongles for a little while, but to be honest, most of the peripherals I use are already USB Type-C. Like this tiny Kingston 128 gig thumb drive, it's USB 3.1, it's quick and it's easy to take with me. My external drive and RAID are already USB Type-C. I can easily add back my SD card slot with minimal bulk and I can drive a secondary portable display with ease. So between the two, the Surface Book is gonna be a lot more convenient at this time and you may have to spend a little bit more money on the MacBook for some peripherals, but when it comes to future proofing, I think USB Type-C is the future. It's a lot faster. So once more manufacturers start adopting USB Type-C, I don't think this is gonna be much of a problem. I mean, what do you guys think? So before we jump into performance, let's talk about the displays a little bit. The Surface Book is a little smaller at 13.5 inches, but has a higher resolution at 3000 by 2000 with 267 pixels per inch with a different 3 by 2 aspect ratio, but I'm digging it. The display looks fantastic, it's sharp, the colors are nice, and it's great for multitasking with this aspect ratio, and Windows 10 makes it really easy to do this. The new MacBook Pro has a resolution of 2880 by 1800 with 220 pixels per inch, and it also looks fantastic. The contrast level is higher and the color gamut is wider than the last generation, and you can really tell. The display is also crazy bright at 500 nits, so when you put them side by side, you can definitely tell that the MacBook Pro has a brighter display. So to round things up, let's talk about the performance. So let me just say this, that both of these machines are very well optimized for the hardware. Both of these machines do not have the most cutting edge internal specifications, and especially on the Windows side, you can definitely get a stronger and more powerful laptop. But trust me when I say that both of these perform very well on day-to-day -day tasks. They're pretty hard to compare side by side, so I'll use some benchmarks here, and they are pretty similar when it comes to the graphics side. Geekbench edges it to the Surface Book, but you will notice that the quad-core i7 on the MacBook Pro 15-inch makes a huge difference in terms of numbers and potential performance on heavy-duty CPU-intensive work. When it comes to heat under load, they both do really well. They don't get hot enough to where you can't keep it on your lap while you're working. There's not a whole lot of thermal throttling here. I do have to say that the MacBook Pro, it takes longer for the fans to come on, so it's gonna get warmer first. And the Surface Book, the fans tend to kick on right away. And the Surface Book fan is just slightly louder. It's got a little bit of a pitch noise, a little bit higher pitched, while the MacBook Pro is a little bit more silent. So if that matters to you, take it for what it is. Testing gaming is kind of tough because gaming sucks on macOS, so you'd have to install Windows on here. And from what I've seen from other videos, the gaming performance is not that great on the Radeon 460, so I just didn't even bother. But I can link you to a few videos that have done this test. I'm not a huge gamer, so I'd rather you just watch somebody else's video when it comes to gaming performance. But what I can judge it on is video editing because that's what I do, and I use 4K video as a benchmark. On the MacBook Pro, I use Final Cut Pro and that handles 4K and even beyond 4K without any problems and video editing is very smooth on this. On the Surface Book, once the media is transcoded, it also runs smooth on 4K edits and if you're working on 1080p, then you will have absolutely no problems. 
I do have to note that the transcoding times were a little bit longer than I wanted them to be on Premiere, but I'm assuming that has to do with the dual core processor. And when testing the two SSDs, I noticed that the MacBook Pro is a lot faster on read and write speeds. So that is definitely gonna affect a few things when it comes to performance. If you wanna see a more detailed comparison on performance between the two, then let me know and I will make a separate video about that. So the last thing to note is that the Surface Book has a camera on the front and back, and you're also gonna get a much higher 1080p quality on the front facing camera on the Surface Book versus the Potato 720p on the new MacBook Pro. All right guys, well I hope you enjoyed this video. I know this comparison is kind of hard because they're not the same. It's a little bit different than just putting up two Windows machines side by side. But if you look at what these computers were made for and what their visions were, then you can kind of understand where they're coming from. Both of these companies aren't trying to make the most powerful computer, but they're trying to make the most well-rounded computer. And I think both of them have succeeded. I've experienced bugs on both of these, and trust me, they're not a bug-free experience. And I have to say, if I had to go for the bugs, then the MacBook Pro would be worse. This is probably the buggiest new Mac that I've used in a long time. But overall, as a computing experience, I have to say, the build quality on both, the smoothness, the cutting edge innovations that they're trying to push forward for their platforms, I mean, both of these are the pinnacle or the best that you can get on the market right now. So if my opinion counts at all to you, which I don't know if it does or not, but if it does, then upon first impression or just say shock value or which one I'm most impressed by as a whole after using them for three weeks, I would say it would be the Surface Book. It might be a surprise to some of you because I have been a Mac user for the longest time, but I have to say the Surface Book really changed the way I feel about PCs. The build quality is just fantastic. It's the best Windows experience that I've had overall. And I just think they did a great job with this. It's not perfect, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. So when it comes to these two laptops, I think if I had to have a preferred laptop, it would be this one. But since I am a Final Cut Pro user and I just cannot get used to Adobe Premiere, that kind of defaults me back onto the MacBook Pro. All right guys, so let me know what you think and also let me know what else you might wanna see because these two laptops are gonna be around for a while. So I may do a follow up on this. I just wanted to give you a general comparison between the two to see if I can help you make a buying decision. And make sure you follow me on Twitter at Super Scientific and all of my other social networks if you have any questions or if you just wanna interact with me. And make sure you subscribe if you like this and if you wanna see more videos like this. I'll see you guys in the next one.